Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin, but they still reveal things to us as they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table. The story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Thrower's Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Hello and welcome back to Bone Thrower's Theater. My name is Jeremy, playing the character of Jax in this Inspector's Edition. I'm Jeff, a.k.a. Fafa, and I'm playing Brad, the werewolf. How y'all doing? I'm Craig, played by Johnny. And this is Bob again, played by Jeff. And this is Jackie playing a perva. And I am Jordan, the keeper of all that is nightmarish. See? <laughs> <laughs> so, previously on Bone Thrower's Theater, the Lone Star Investigations Edition. Hello, Anne. There was a werewolf that was coming. Describe to me your shape shifting process, Sir Werewolf. How fast is this? Okay, so two okay, shots a gun. Arm reached out, grabbed the bullet mid-flight. Mm-hmm. Dissolved. And I got really confused, and then my brain just shut down for a second. My muscles sort of bulged, and I was, like, twitching, dropped the gun. Face extended. <laughs> I got, like, a couple inches taller, grew a lot of hair really quick. I'm still taller than you. <laughs> yeah. It's because you're a freak. Okay, brothers, no, no, <laughs> no rivalry here. And then my leg joints sort of, like... Pop backwards. Pop backwards a little bit, and the bottom of my foot extended, and my toes became like a paw. And there goes that pair of shoes. Good thing I'm bloated. He's watching this happen. Both Bob and Craig are standing there with me, so they're probably freaking out about this. Ah! Craig, think something's wrong, with Bob. I'm shooting while he's saying this. Go ahead and roll to shoot Brandon. Uh, Six. He's going to roll his athletics, which is a seven. Six. Both of you describe what happened. Johnny, you go first. So he's shifting and changing and getting all uh, not human. And I pull the trigger. And I pull the trigger. And I pull the trigger. And it hits him in the back. And he starts to turn. And it hits him in the arm. And he keeps turning. And I hit him in his chest. I don't know what these do to werewolves, these ectoplasmic bullets. Well, since I was rolling my agility to get out of the way, I heard the gun cock getting ready to shoot. I sort of do like a leap backwards, so it looked like it hit me, but it hit the wall. And then I turn and go past him, so it looks like it got me in the chest, or the arm, and then it hits the wall right in front of him, so we see something spray. And then the third shot, while it looks like it hits my chest, it's me hitting it away. Yeah. Hitting it away, like mm-hmm. with your hand. Yeah, Paul. So it would still like explode on your hand. It's ectoplasma. Yeah, but it didn't hit me. I just I hit it. Like deflected it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, role playing game physics. Yeah, I go for my silver dagger. I'm awesome. Okay. On my offhand. Both of you roll stress. Two, one, three. Don't ask. It doesn't matter. I can't go down any further or anything. So. Two. And Two. I snarl severely Four. at them. <laughs> Okay, you're relatively good. Hey, I'm hunting something I can shoot now. When you try and grab your dagger, mm-hmm. you drop it again. Mm-hmm. You drop it, and it like falls down into the blood that's at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, no. All of a sudden, Brandon, you start feeling this tugging motion. It sits like right in the middle of your thorax. You start feeling this motion. It's like you're being sucked backwards, and then you disappear. Oh my. Black hole! Aperva and Jax, what are you up to? Last we left us, we, we were breaking the cement hands. Yes. Dum, 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 dum. High five, high five, high five! <laughs> and heading down the steps? Yes, in a very victorious manner. In the dark. Breaking hands as you go. What do you know? Did we hear anything? Is like how it was it would breaking hands to the theme of my guy. I know. <laughs> how, how tall is this building? It's a 
couple stories, like three, oh, like okay. maybe three stories. So we would still hear the the shots. Oh, you move yeah. the most definitely. Okay. Um, I hear shooting. I'm going to holler down for our peoples. Holla. Four. Okay, you succeed. Um, I think they need our help down there. We were heading down the steps already, so continue down. If the I steps. hear her, I just uh... Brandon, Wolf, Blood, Guts, help! It's a conspiracy. <laughs> of course it is. I take like a chicken peek out the window by the door to see if that man's out there, the man in the black suit. And to see if I'm out there? Well, I don't care about you. Well, you were just hunting me, weren't you? Well, yeah, but you disappeared through a black hole, and I don't like black holes. Go ahead and roll uh, contacts. <laughs> One. Yeah. You don't see anything. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm going back downstairs to retrieve my knife and the pistols. From the blood. I'm just like frazzled. So I'm just like, ah, must get my knife. Why, hello there, little man. It is time for your shot. <laughs> Come and get me. <laughs> and it, you turn around in while you're on your hands and knees in the blood in the viscera that is like in the bottom of the stairs. And you see standing there the Nazi scientist that um, Craig had seen in the windows with the, the large needle and the bank, vacant look in his eye. You can see that he's wearing a white lab coat, but he's also wearing knee waders and this black apron and black rubber gloves. And he's got this needle that's this large. It fills his entire palm and the needle, needle is a good four inches long. It's time for your treatment. And he starts like stalking towards you in a, in a very menacing manner. Nazi ghost. I get what up, you draw my shotgun? saber and my black and and revolver uh -huh. while I was changing. And I prepared to defend myself. And I all the while screaming help. <laughs> okay, go ahead and uh, roll athletics to attack the Nazi ghost. Keep while he's doing that, I'm picking up the shotgun. Okay. Five. Tell me how you destroy the Nazi ghost. I shoot him once and my bullet goes screaming and hits him in the head and he keeps coming. So I scream at him in Latin, um, an incantation for ghost removal, and I chop his head off. It goes. And this is different from when the ghosts like get sucked into the black hole. He actually like disintegrates, like into a dust. So sort of the same way uh, Barnhouse did, and the hands, and also the whatever was in the staircase. <laughs> Three more shots, and I gotta reload this thing. <laughs> 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 I put my weapons away, go back to searching. Let's find my dagger. And the boss will kill me if I don't get these guns. My boss! He turned into a wolf. He did turn into a wolf. I start talking to myself in Latin. Yes, sir. You find yourself in a white, bright, circular room. And you're still a werewolf. He's most interesting. You hear coming from a wall speaker. We have not brought something of this nature before. And you see a small, about three and a half foot tall, gray being with a large head, large bulbous eyes that are actually, you know, like an insect's eyes and are multifaceted. Come into the room, wearing no clothing. Sniff at him, growl at him, pounce with claws. Go ahead and roll. And ripping teeth. Told you with the aliens. <laughs> That's why I gave you a box of sixes. Oh my gosh, Jeff. <laughs> wow. Four sixes. Jeff, you need to be a werewolf more often. <laughs> yes, I do. So I go at it with claws and teeth bared and mm -hmm. rub its jugular out and swing it across the room and start snar snarling at the walls looking for a way out. All of a sudden, there, you start hearing, he's dangerous, he's dangerous. What, you, what your mind is translating as someone yelling, he's dangerous, he's dangerous. And all of a sudden, you're transported to a sunny room. There's a radio sitting in the corner, and it's playing yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And a pretty nurse comes into the room, and she's not wearing modern-day scrub. She's wearing a white dress and has an apron on and a white hat. And you are no longer a werewolf. That was weird. You're now sitting in the Jefferson Davis Memorial Hospital mm. in 1947. It's a temporal areas. <laughs> temporal displacement. And she says, all right, Mr. Harete, time for your medicine. 
She puts two blue pills in your mouth. Blue pills. <laughs> Professional. The entire time I thought I was an inspector, a well-to-do, part of a werewolf family that run back generations. I realized waking up in this asylum that what I was seeing was not real at all. It was a made-up future of bizarre things that could never happen because I'm insane. Mentally insane. I, I don't know what I was doing thinking those things because that's obviously not what's going on around me. So the pills... And I swallow the blue pills. There you go. <laughs> the cake is a lie. <laughs> the cake certainly... Cut to modern day. <laughs> you are still trapped in this hell house. Yeah. Aperva and Jax come down the steps. Greg, what's going on? Uh, boss man, he just turned into a wolf and disappeared. He disappeared? Turned into a wolf. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, how did he disappear? Black holes. There's aliens in black holes. Forget aliens. Describe it without saying aliens. Okay. He turned into a wolf and disappeared. He was standing there. I was shooting at him and he disappeared. I tried to stab him. There's Nazis down here. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing where you standing. I took three shots. I hit him three times and he vanished. Yeah, sucked uh, into that black hole, like that kid was talking about. Someone needs to be a leader now. I will be your leader. Oh gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone take a blue pill first. No one take any pills. Yeah, we all need a little chill pill, okay? We no need to forget one take reality. No any pills, trust me. No pills. That's better Hinduism through pharma pharmacology. <laughs> so many of my people are pharmacists. <laughs> We're not racist, I promise. <laughs> I didn't say aliens. You, no, you didn't, and it's starting to make more sense when you don't say aliens. But it was those aliens in the black oh, holes. Oh gosh, no aliens. We've got I'm shooting it with this ghost gun. Listen, 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 listen. We've got this whole entire place. Everything about this place screams that it is haunted with ghosts. I mean, we saw hundreds of hands coming out of the walls. We did. We smacked them, high fives, and broke them. Yes, so we need to figure out a way to get an ectoplasmic charge throughout this entire building simultaneously. All of a sudden, the front door swings open. I turn and shoot. Don't even look, I just turn and shoot. Go ahead and roll technology. Six. All right, I turn, the door's open, I shoot the man in black. His hat flies off, and he has no eyes beneath his glasses. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not even like eye sign, it's just a blank slate. So I told you there was those aliens. His face begins to shrivel tight across it, and his nose melts back into his face, and so do his ears and his hair, and he is completely bald. His eyes, oh, like you said, that they're not there, all of a sudden his face splits, like right across where his eyes would be. Like shreds of flesh just start drooping down and cover his face. If you went over and you pulled it back, you would see like there there's this gray, elephantine colored patched skin underneath the human flesh. Oh my gosh, the Hibbity was right. There were aliens. What about aliens? Is Brand back? Am I gonna get fired? I think we're all <laughs> dead, man. Why? There's Nazis down here. Aliens are attacking. Don't have the alien Nazis on. I gave you the other box of ammunition. Switch. So from the backyard, all of a sudden you hear this. <laughs> like this noise of like an engine speeding up. And if you got to the back of the wall, you would see like the back wall where the windows are for the, the back apartments. You would see the shed that Mr. Barnhouse, Reggie Barnhouse, had been putting the tools into would just rip up and just fall away. And there would be a small saucer, about the size of this living room, that just starts taking off right off in, into the sky. Don't believe me about the aliens, and I'm the one out here all hunting all the time. Alien ghosts, that's what it was. That's why your ghost bullets killed things. I found the gun. 
Can I have a pill? <laughs> is the body still standing there melting? <laughs> no, the, bo- the body's laying on the floor. The body's still- okay. Anybody else want a pretty pink pill? One, I will not take pills so I can drive us back safely because this is just some crazy ass crap going on up in here. <laughs> yep, definitely going back up to the hills. We're sort of in the lobby of the apartment complex thing. Mm-hmm. I look up. Is there a chandelier? Yes. No, actually, I'm not telling you that. Go ahead and roll for it. What am I rolling? You're going to go ahead and uh, roll academics to look and see if there's a chandelier. Can I out- augment my roll? Yes, you can. Chandelier. Well, I like cards. I'm going to use it all. Okay. Four. Mostly positive result. One negative or human uh, humorous effect. There is a chandelier, but when I look up, I notice that there is a uh, figure that seems to be hanging from the chandelier, and the chandelier is swinging back and forth. Okay. Rapidly. Confession? Confessional. <laughs> so, now that we know that Brandon was never actually here, we're wondering what the motives were behind all of our missions previously and what compelled him to hunt his own kind. From here on out, that's the mission of our, this office. Looking back on that day, we can take pride in the fact that, in the end, we gave him peace. So this is sort of like an afterward an flash act. forward confessional. Okay. Mm-hmm. As you guys are standing there and looking at the chandelier, you start to smell what's like it smells like an electrical fire coming from the breaker room of the apartment building. Boss man, if you're here, we're leaving. Laser shotguns ready. Put traps underneath the chandelier. Alright. Everybody roll technology. Mm-hmm. Not you. Six. Four. Six. What'd you get? Six. <laughs> <laughs> Minus, Minus five. five. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't worry about it. So, go ahead and describe your good uh, outcomes, Jackson. You get the traps all laid out, and I take a shot up at the chandelier with the laser shotgun. It's like buckshot ball. One inch ball. Yeah. Shoots up, hits the chandelier at the top, at the top of the chandelier where it's attached to the ceiling, mm-hmm. and explodes in light, shooting laser beams. About uh, they only shoot about ten feet. Okay. So it kills anything up there. Chandelier comes crashing down. Before the chandelier reaches the ground, I open the traps and shoot another round goes right into the center of the chandelier and that's when it explodes shooting the lasers out into the crystals of the chandelier which and the whole entire place is pretty much lit up with the ectoplasmic burst and you just see ghosts just disintegrating coming out of the walls like towards the traps and just disintegrating as they're coming and up from the up from the floor comes what we recognize as Brandon. As a ghost? As a ghost. And his final words before his disintegration are... Didn't expect this to happen. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and and give you the... I'm going to go ahead and let you all go around the table one last time and give one final closing confessional as your reaction to the story. Well, you know, Craig didn't seem like he had it all together in the head, but somehow he knew that aliens were involved. Uh, I may have to rethink my position on aliens. Yes, the place was haunted by hundreds and hundreds of ghosts, so I was right. But, as usual, since there were aliens, Craig is taking the credit. See, nobody ever believed me when I told him it's the aliens attacking. And the aliens are going through the black holes and suck us all out of existence one of these days. So I'm just going to take me back up to the hills, protect my family, and forget that bring them down to the city mess. It's too dangerous down here. Farewell. Hasta la pasta, something or others. Bob takes a sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> and hooks up with a, a therapist friends of him. 
symptoms and um, starts intensive inpatient therapy. Um, decides he likes the pills that a perva gave him. And so if she agrees to keep giving him the pills, he'll marry her. <laughs> and he's decided in the end he's going to quit this job and go back to teaching. Although Perper is very flattered by the fact that she actually was able to land a man, <laughs> she did not want crazy local man. <laughs> a Perva goes back to Houston and finds Geppetto, and she re- recognizes that this inspector's business just is not quite set for her. She has decided to become a motivational speaker. <laughs> On recovering Hindus, rediscovering their taste buds for beef and Cadbury eggs. <laughs> well, realizing that these dreams could never happen, he requests to be lobotomized. And something goes wrong, and he doesn't quite understand anything from then on. And so he's haunted by these dream people that are in a world that couldn't possibly exist. That becomes his reality, even though they've tried to get rid of that aspect of his memory. That was the whole reason he went through the lobotomy, was to get rid of that, and that was his world from then on. Alright. Just as a quick roundup, now, some of you guys have already played Inspectors before, but for the three new people, what do you guys think of the game? It's very good. I liked it a lot. Bob ran off with his ra- a student once he was rejected. By <laughs> 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 Just living on a beach and life isn't life to be rejected by a tranny. It was an alien ghost. I will say I love being a werewolf <laughs> because <laughs> he, he rolled sixes. Everything went into athletics and it was amazing. It was pretty darn cool. It was it was, it good. was awesome. Yeah, I had a good time. I love how in your goal for your character creation. It sort of played out that you didn't specify it says so like to be cured from my affliction and the affliction was just being a ghost that was never at peace yeah and also did you guys notice that a werewolf appeared in one of the visions uh-huh. yeah that was brandon when the kid was describing the yeah. windows opening and one of the visions it was a werewolf attacking in the hospital in the hospital ah so I knew pretty I knew pretty early on that there was going to be a time travel thing and that that the werewolf was going to be sent back in time. Then he kept on talking about the aliens, so it's like, well, we'll work this in. So I, I love how that worked in to uh, one of my the questions when creating the character. Yeah. That when I think I'm going to get what I want, someone else takes the credit. We'll see. I worked with the uh, the aliens thing was the uh, my fear sci-fi dangers are real. That's true. And they were. And they were in the end. You see, that, that's the great thing about giving characters goals and yeah. motivations. It gives you guys story hooks to yeah. let you kind of go with what you want. And then we can give it to you. And it, it turns out to be a pretty cool story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the questions for me was, uh, I've come to realize that things don't turn out the way I expected. <laughs> they did not turn out the way I expected. Well, that, that's Jordan's GM style, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to not turn out the way you expect. <laughs> yeah, every everything about the GM style yeah. happens that way. But um, yeah, this is this has been a lot of fun. Um, I think we are we are recording this in October. I don't think we'll get to posting it in October, but it's a lot of fun to come back to this game every like October time frame because it's a it's a good horror game and it's a good it's a good comedy game as well. There's a there was a lot of fun had tonight at the table. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember oh, yes. anything. <laughs> I mean, Bob managed to avoid the government and managed to avoid mind control, and he did eventually finish his book. Yeah. Well, See, good, good for Bob. <laughs> I was thinking that the, the, get, the get man black was, was like an FBI guy or something. Yeah. All right, well, I think we're going to go ahead and call it a quit for this session and for this set of recordings of the uh, Lone Star Inspectors. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to Bone Thrower's Theater. The cast is Carlin, Jeff, Jeremy, Johnny, Jordan, and Stephanie. This podcast is released under our Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives, 3.0 Unboarded License. 
please feel free to share the podcast, but please do not modify it or attempt to gain financially from it. To find the show online, visit our site, BoneThrowersTheater.com. Our Twitter feed is at BoneThrowersTheater, and our email address is BoneThrowersTheater at gmail.com. Join our social networks on Facebook and Google+. Plus. Podcast art was designed by Laura Tress and is used with her permission. Until next time, may the bones fall in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.